Hey guys, my name is Donnie and welcome back to another episode of Working on the D-Type. And guys, now that I've painted the car, I have now proceeded on to the next stage of the build. And guys, there is a heck of a list that I have now made of all the things that I need to do to finish up this car. There's still a lot that needs to happen. Some of them are small little thingies and some are rather big. Like for instance, I need to make uh, if I read there on the list, I need to make a fuel tank, I need to work on the dashboard, on the steering, pedal box, gear selector, stuff like that. And some of the things that I need to do is list expands very, very much. Like for instance, the dashboard, I need to fabricate the dashboard, then I need to install the dials, and then I need to do the wiring on the dials and so on. And the same goes for the steering. I need to install a steering column, I need to connect it to the rack and pinion. I need to fix the steering wheel to the column and the pedal box and everything like that. So there's a lot of things that needs to happen and I'm going to try and break it down into little bite sized bits so that I can then finish up this build sooner than later. And guys the first thing that I'm going to do or the thing that I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to attempt to manufacture a fuel tank for this car because the fuel tank that came with the car does not fit at all and guys I'm going to attempt to rather than try and modify the old tank to fit i'm gonna make a new one from scratch i've only done this once before and that was on the mclaren and it's still holding up to this very day so i think that i should have success with it and also with the amount of experience that i've gained in the meantime i think i might just get good results now guys the way that i'm going to make it is i'm going to be using this mild flat rolled steel sheet and I'm going to manufacture a fuel tank that's going to fit there in the back of this Jaguar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lift up the rear. And I can show you guys exactly where I want to put the fuel tank and how I plan on making it. So guys, this is what the inside or the cavity looks like at the back. I'm sure that you guys will remember. And this is where I'm going to be putting the fuel cell or the fuel tank. Now guys, on the original car, this fuel tank was absolutely massive. It was like a 160 or 170 liter tank, about 44 gallons or so, which was huge, but very, very necessary because these cars drove in the 24 hours of Le Mans. So the further you could go and the less time that you could spend refueling, the more time you could gain. But guys, I'm not so concerned in putting such a big tank in here. And also it won't even fit because this rear section looks a little bit different than what the original car looked so there's less room for me to put such a massive tank in here but i think or i hope that i'll be able to get at least 50 liters of tank in here which will be more than adequate for what this car is going to be used for now guys in the original car i suspect that the fuel tank was bolted here onto this section at the back but i'm gonna rather bolt it onto this nice strong structure over here and then let this drop down onto it and then i'm just going to put a filler cap over there that's going to go through that hairdressed area over there and that's going to be it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just do some measurements and make sure that i can get, build a box that fits in there that's large enough for my requirements and then i'm going to show you how i'm going to be constructing this fuel cell and the process that i'm going to follow to do that Okay guys, so this is where we stand at the moment. I was planning on just making a flat fuel cell in the shape of this piece of off-cut wood. And um, guys, it's never as simple as it seems because I realized that this fuel pickup needed much further reach than what this fuel, this flat cell was gonna offer me. So at the end of the day, I decided I was gonna have to go down into this cavity over here and this is the design that I came up with. It's a little bit more complicated, but I think it's going to work very well at the end of the day because that lower part over there is also going to help reduce fuel starvation and so on. I'm going to be putting some baffles on the inside, but I made this as large as I possibly could to fit into this cavity. And these are the calculations that I came up with and it works out at about 53 liters or just a little bit over 50 liters so that was what i was aiming for so i think that we are onto something so guys the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start cutting out 
these measurements on the piece of cold rolled flat sheet and I'm gonna try and measure it out so that I can have as little as possible welding spots reducing any chance of leakages and so on. So let me get everything ready and I'll update you in a moment. Okay guys, this is where we are at the moment. I've now finished cutting out all of the pieces that I think I'm going to need and I then bent this part of the fuel cell in its spots and what I did was I just scorched the edges where uh, with the grinder where I'm going to where I was going to fold it. But I got to tell you guys that one of these days I need to make myself a bending break because it was still very hard work to fold these corners. Um, this is 1.2 millimeter cold rolled flat sheet for you guys that wants to know and I think it's going to be more than strong enough. Uh, also on this cover or this top part I made this blanking plate that's going to be where the fuel gauge and also the fuel pump's going to go in there so I can remove that and then just bolt everything onto it and install it over there and it's also going to be an inspection hole. This is where the filler cap is gonna go like that and the filler cap on top of that and I just rolled a couple of holes in here just so that you won't ever actually lose something in there when you're filling up like I have before with the Bugatti and these are the blanking plates that I can now weld into position they go over there and then I also made these baffles that goes on the inside and they are just there to help reduce fuel from sloshing around inside of the fuel tank so they don't, they don't have to be water or airtight or anything like that it's just there to help reduce the sloshing of fuel so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start tacking everything together and I'm going to start with these baffles uh, because I need to be able to reach them on the inside and then I will take it from there probably weld in these corner sections or these side checks sections on both sides and then I can put the top one on top of that and weld in this filler cap piece over here and then I can weld everything together permanently and only after that I can start doing some air tightness tests and I reckon I'm gonna have a couple of leaks but I'll just test it with some air and some soapy water and then mark the spots that are still leaking and then weld it up properly and make sure everything is nice and watertight and airtight and fuel tight before I paint this fuel tank finally but let me get started and we can take it from there
everybody guys I have now finished welding this whole tank together and what I need to do now is I need to determine whether there are still leaks on my welds and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna put some air into this fuel tank and then I'm gonna use this soapy water and then just see if I can find any leaks that are still in my welds and I most definitely suspect that there will be so what I do is I just put some air into my fuel tank just a little bit and then I just spray and I can actually see a couple of holes appearing or uh, pinholes that I still need to fix so I'm just gonna mark them out and weld it up and when I'm done with that and I'm happy that the whole thing is airtight then I can paint it and I can install it into the Jaguar so I have now finished making the fuel tank and I also made these straps out of flat bar to hold everything in place I did test it on the car to make sure everything fits and what I did then was I made this complete or this um, this fuel pickup slash fuel pump slash fuel level sender unit all in one so that it can fit into that hole over there so it's got the high pressure fuel pump with the inlet as well as the return and it's got a fuel level sensor with a pre-filter so i can just install this into the uh, fuel cell and then i can install it into the car and we can see what it looks like guys there we go I have made a fuel cell for the Jaguar and it is looking pretty damn good I gotta tell you I've got the intake over there I've got a filler cap that I'm gonna be installing there it fits nicely into that opening there at the headrest and it is nice and tight and I'm especially proud of this fuel pickup slash fuel pump slash fuel level, level sender that I made that fits over there and it's on the deep end of the fuel cell so it'll give an accurate reading of the amount of fuel that's in there and also it'll be able to pick up all the fuel without having any fuel starvation but guys this is looking pretty awesome I have not put rubber or I want to put some rubber strips underneath and on top of this fuel tank but I don't have any on hand at the moment so I'll do that at a later stage but guys this is looking pretty and also it fits nicely it closes up perfectly and excuse the fact the cars are dirty and dusty but that's where the fuel goes in and then if I put this fuel cap on top over here I'm just going to tighten it with some grub screws it's going to look exactly the way that the original car looked or very very close to the original and everything fits and everything is nice so that is pretty guys i'm very happy with the progress that i've made so far uh, i'm gonna think of so I, there's at least one thing that i can tick off of that list for now and then next week we can do something else but i will see you again next week cheers